I wonder if there's anything to drink. Okay, let's see what we got here. Uh, I've got uh, some milk, now some flavored water, cranberry juice, got some Diet Coke, uh, got some vitamin water. Oh, let's do Mountain Dew. This looks good. Here it is. This is the limited edition Xbox Mountain Dew. Uh, it came out in 2004. It was only available for five months, from April 2004 to August 2004. And basically, the only way you can get this is if you collected uh, Mountain Dew points and you mail in 550 Mountain Dew points, and then that will give you an opportunity to buy uh, the system at full price. So it was only limited uh, limited to a thousand production run. Uh, it's fairly rare uh, to find today. I really like the, the lime green. The original Xbox was actually black, but there's a whole bunch of different variations. One more common variation is the Halo one, which is kind of a see-through green. I have that as well, which I'll maybe do a review later on in a future video. Uh, but this is a really cool addition. The controller itself actually came with a normal standard Xbox controller. It wasn't green to my knowledge anyway. I haven't seen any green ones. Uh, so it just came with a standard controller, very similar to like maybe a 360 controller today. You get your two analog sticks, you get your directional pad, you get your AB, XY, your start, uh, your select, okay, your option buttons, your, your trigger buttons. These are slots for, uh, you can actually put in a memory card and save uh, game footage or save game files to this and then transfer it to a different Xbox. The thing about Xbox was that though there's some unique games that, that have unique signatures and some games did not recognize if I saved it on one Xbox and I transferred to another one, it would not save it. So that was kind of a, a lame thing. The first edition uh, Xbox controller is actually known as like the fatty controller and this is it right here. As you can see, it's significantly bigger and more round. In fact, it's one of the largest uh, controllers for a console there are, there is anyway. And you can see that just a different different button layout. Uh, they kind of move the buttons around. You can see how much bigger it is. I'm not a big fan of this. This is kind of heavy. The unique thing about the controller though is that with a cord, uh, Microsoft was kind of smart because what they wanted to do was they figured if, you, if you're too far away and you pull it, there's a chance you might pull the console off. And so they had like a breakaway uh, cord here so that wouldn't happen which is kind of a unique concept. There's four controller slots here. This is your open, you can open and trade. This is your power on button on the back. And this thing is very, very heavy. Uh, you got your, your cable modem for uh, internet. You can go to Xbox Live which I'll talk about here in a second. You get your AV cables which is your red, white composite, uh, yellow composite cables. And you get your power uh, would go here, this would go here. So pretty standard. And basically the whole idea how Xbox got started was back to 1998 where uh, the Direct X team for Xbox was working on. Uh, they were concerned because at the time, yeah, the Dreamcast uh, was about to come out. Uh, PS2 was about to hit the market as well. And a lot of the PC games were going, transferring over to the home market. So they wanted to kind of, uh, to, they, what they did was they basically took a Dell computer, kind of reverse engineered it and wanted to come out with like a home console version. So it was actually known as a direct Xbox. Uh, and what they did was Microsoft shortened it to eventually just Xbox. They really didn't like the name Xbox uh, initially because one or two reasons they thought it was kind of a, people wouldn't like it. So they did kind of a test and they did a study and they asked people, uh, they gave me a whole bunch of names and they found that Xbox really stuck with the consumer. So they decided to call it the shortened direct Xbox to just Xbox. And that's how we, uh, it's known today. And this isn't the first time actually that Nintendo had worked with a console. They actually worked with Sega uh, really closely with the Dreamcast because Dreamcast ran off, ran off a Windows CE operating system. And so, but this is the first attempt for Microsoft to actually create their own uh, console to the market. It, this system came out, Xbox came out in November 2001. And by 2006, it was actually discontinued. Once the 360 hit the market, Microsoft pretty much stopped support, see support of the original Xbox. So I, I kind of feel bad about because I thought Xbox has, the original Xbox has some great games. It's one of the first systems with actual internal hard drive in it where you had systems like the Saturn or, you know, other systems that you could actually have to save files, but that wasn't necessarily a hard drive. This is actually had 
its own hard drive. So essentially it's kind of like a PC. It does run off its own kind of a version of Windows, almost like a Windows 2000. In 2002, Xbox actually launched Xbox Live, which is, uh, you know, still known today for 360. Many of us play it. There's over 10 million users, uh, but it grew, grew really fast and it gave the opportunity for, for gamers to connect uh, and, and play online, which is unique, very similar to, to PC. So that was really innovative for uh, Microsoft to do that. They're kind of ahead of the game and they still are kind of ahead of the game as far as online gaming goes even today. Uh, there was over, th by 2004, a couple years after the launch of Xbox Live, there was over 3 million people, users using Xbox Live. Uh, and by 2002, Xbox actually took over second place f behind uh, PlayStation 2 and bumped Nintendo kind of down, the GameCube down to third place in the market. Uh, Xbox didn't sell very well in Japan, unfortunately, uh, and it did, it sold decent in Europe and, and sold pretty well here in, in the States. North America actually over, and all said and done, about a little over 24 million uh, systems were, were made. But again, they kind of dropped it off. They dropped it um, really suddenly uh, since the 360 came out. All said and done, there are about 966 Xbox games that were released for the system. A lot of those, um, you know, a handful of those were exclusive to, you know, Europe and, and Japan. They weren't all available in North America, of course. But some of my favorite games, in fact, Halo was one of the launch titles for Xbox. And many of, us, many of us gamers are familiar with the Halo franchise today, but that really uh, set like the standard for first person shooters today. Up to that point, GoldenEye had been probably the most successful, you know, first person shooter up to this point. Uh, and this really set the standard, and especially since you could play online for Xbox Live, it really set the standard for, for first person shooters. In addition, other great franchises was Fable series, Project Gotham Racing. It's another thing I want to mention is that uh, with, the two, this, with this bundle, the Xbox Live Edition bundle, it came with one of two different games. Either it came out with Project Gotham Racing, or uh, two, that is, and or Amped 2. Uh, I, don't know, I think it was kind of random, or I wasn't sure if you selected or not. I'm not sure how that worked. Overall, I feel like Xbox is a really fantastic system. I really like it a lot. Uh, there's some great games uh, that I write. Another game I want to mention is uh, Star Wars uh, Knights of the Old Republic. It's one of my favorite Star Wars games, and that was an exclusive title for the Xbox. So uh, they seem to have a lot of good exclusives. It was kind of overshadowed by, by Sony and the PlayStation, PlayStation 2 because that's what most people had during the early 2000s. But overall, this is a really cool limited edition Xbox Mountain Dew. I appreciate you guys watching. Thanks for subscribing. We'll see you soon. Take care.